Yes, hello and welcome to the first lecture of 3D Studio Max. I'm recording this for my university students as a reminder if they want to get more practice. Uh, we will be going over the basic uh, layout and the basic navigation and geometries of 3D Studio Max. As you can see, you have four basic viewports, just like many other programs. You have your main toolbar at the top, timeline at the bottom, and in the right hand side, you have your command panel. So these are uh, the, the active viewport is always outlined with a yellow line. So if I click on other viewports, you see that they get activated. You can edit only in the activated viewport. So first lesson is to enlarge the viewport because we want to start working in the perspective view for, uh, for now. So to enlarge the viewport, you want to press Alt and W. So while your mouse is hovering on a viewport, over a viewport, it doesn't need to be activated even. You press Alt and W together, it enlarges it. So if I want to go to front, I just, or if I want to go to top now, I just hover my mouse over the top view, press Alt W, it goes there. Again, comes back to the four uh, viewport standard view. Uh, you can always activate the viewport and use this button here uh, at the right hand side of the bot bottom of the screen, uh, screen to enlarge it. But I want, I want to encourage you to use the screen as much as possible. So try to remember Alt and W. We will be using this button a lot. Uh, the second lesson is the basic navigation in the 3D Studio Max. So you have your basic pan tool, which uh, is your middle mouse button. So yeah, you're working, you will be working a lot with the middle mouse button. I advise you to get a mouse with a good, uh, a large middle mouse button if possible, because you will be pushing it a lot if you're working, if you're drafting in 3D. So you, you push middle mouse button and this is pan. If you keep alt and push middle mouse button, this is rotate, as you can see. Let me create an object so you can see it much, much more easy. Okay, now let me create a few more, just so it makes sense. All right, so middle mouse button, pan, alt down, middle mouse button, you rotate. If you want to rotate around the particular object, just select the object and press Z. It will centralize that object. Now, if I if I rotate, I'm rotating around that particular object. I'm, I'm rotating ar around the gizmo of that object to be more precise. So Alt and middle mouse button for rotation, middle mouse button for pan. And of course, the scroll is often used for zoom, but it's not the most precise zoom. As you can see, it has its own increments. Yes, uh, so if you want to have a more precise zoom, you press Alt, Control, and again, middle mouse button. Here you can have a dynamic smooth zoom. You can also use Shift to get more precision, to, to, to limit your movement a little bit, let's say. For example, if I want to rotate around this object, but I don't want my uh, viewport to change altitude, to change height, if I keep Alt and start to rotate freely, but now if I keep Alt and Shift, you see it will it will only it will only rotate around an object uh, with a restricted height for the camera, basically. So Shift works for this, also for the pan. Keep the Shift down if you're doing pan, and it gives you the option to pan only up down. Depends on your first movement or side, uh, left and right. And control is basically for increasing speed. So, like if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, rotate faster, you can always uh, keep control. Uh, uh, not for rotation, for the pan, for example. It will just go much, much more faster. Yes. Yeah, so these are the basic navigation tool. I'm just repeating very quickly. Uh, middle mouse button for pan. Alt middle mouse button for rotation. Scroll for zoom. Control Alt for the dynamic zoom, Shift to lock down, yes, now, uh, if you're ever lost in the 3D Studio Max space, you can always press the home button here, uh, at, on the top of the view cube, uh, here, it will bring you home to your home grid. Uh, you can also use all these uh, navigation in all viewports. So you can use the pan, you can use the rotate, you can use the zoom, as you can see, easily. 
but I don't advise you rotating the orthographic viewports. These three are orthographic viewports. They help you a lot in like regulating much, much more complicated scenes. So if you start to rotate this, let's, let's, let's do it actually. You'll get this uh, isonometric uh, view, which is not that much useful. Sometimes if you want to render toward the end, an isonometric perspective might be very helpful. But uh, usually we try to keep it, uh, we try to keep it, uh, flat as much as possible all right so let's go to the main viewport and let's start the project i will start the project by creating a box so here the right hand side you have your uh, command panel under it you have the create tab under the create you have certain things that you can create we start with the geometries standard primitive uh, the name suggests these are very standard primitive objects you start with the box uh, so you can draw a box you click once you click twice and you click thrice and you have and here you have your box uh, you have different ways of viewing objects in 3d studio max you can go always to the wireframe by pressing f3 so f3 for wireframing you can see it change here uh, you can also pick it from here if you don't want to press f3 but i suggest to uh, i suggest you to remember these uh, keyboards as uh, hotkeys as much as possible so f3 for uh, wireframing and f4 for edge faces so within the shaded uh, within the shaded uh, option if you press f4 it will it will show you also the edges of the objects which is sometimes useful we will see it later on so I have a box here this is uh, this is going to be a kind of because I have a lot of these going around here where I live uh, uh, I want to build the Turkish mosque here because students are familiar with geometries uh, all right so the second lesson after you create this object are how to move rotate and to scale objects so these are the the holy trinity of all 3d programs they all have usually they're all assigned to the same key actually these are the most uh, the most things that you will be doing in uh, while working in a 3d program uh, so move is w rotate is e and scale is r you can also pick it up from here you'll see it here change as i push the buttons w e r w e r w e r move rotate scale w for move e for rotate and r for scale so when you when you when you press w the gizmo appears and here you can pick one of these like you can go only toward x direction you can only go toward y direction or z direction or you can pick one of the surfaces and like go into two direction mode so for example you can only move it in xz mode now yes okay or you can pick the middle and just move it freely which i don't suggest you to do it because it's not really that precise uh, so i have the i have the box you can always modify the dimension and the segments of the box if you go here if you remember i already press f4 so i can see the edges you can increase the segments uh, this is useful if you want to create a kind of a more complex geometries later you want to give it more segments especially if you want to later on uh, export it to lumion sometimes when you have very little segments very low segment count uh, the lumion doesn't recognize some of the faces so you want to give it some minimum few segments especially if you're going to carve something out of it or add something to it if it's a basic cube yeah you can leave it uh, one 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 but if it's going to be a little bit more complicated uh, give it some segments you can think beforehand for example if you're trying to open up windows or you can you open up like something holding the building or create something out of it you have to plan ahead you have to know how much how much uh, how much actually how, how many egg, uh, segments do you need how how complex is your topology um, all right so i'll leave it just uh, I, I'll, I'll leave it like this for now it's just to show you the second tab modify we will be coming here a lot you can pick many many modifiers uh, from here and like apply it to this object so uh you can go to the create tab again so here i want to create a dome on top of this uh, I create a sphere here. Sphere you only drag once. 
So for sphere, again, I'm going to the modify tab. I have many different options here. I have the hemisphere, which is now on zero. It means that we'll see the entire uh, sphere. If I put it on half, it will chop it uh, to half. And you can play with these two small triangles here to see how it works. It's basically a cut plane that moves. Like you can do this with modifiers as well, but this is also like a very basic way of doing it as well. So I don't want actually a half hemisphere because it's not, it doesn't look like a very good dome. I want something like 0 0.6 maybe. Yeah, this looks, looks fine. Uh, and then uh, I want to have for something, I will move this on top of. Yeah, and it, there are better ways of doing it, but for the sake of practice today, we will do it like this. And then I want to have a cylinder. Uh, for cylinder again, you can drag and go up. Uh, the cylinder, it doesn't. I don't want it to have that much. I want it to have more segments. I want to make it a little bit smoother. Yes. So. Now I go to my four viewports, I go to the top, first I adjust these two uh, from the top. There are better ways of adjusting these, exactly centralizing them. For the sake of this very basic tutorial, I'm just going to eyeball it. I adjust you at the beginning to eyeball stuff, uh, just to play with the, uh, uh, just to play with this uh, commands just to play with the geometry see how what they have to offer so uh, here I go to the side bring this up and then bring this on top of it if you don't like a cup we will get to the materials way way later down the course so not way way longer but we'll get to it so if you want to change the color of an object for now if you select it you go to modify there is this option here, you can like give it a kind of a color if you don't like the color that is being shown there. Uh, this, this looks fine for now, for me. Uh, let's have this gray. Okay, now I have my basic dome. Uh, but I want to have some sub domes because this is basically a kind of a Turkish uh, traditional, let's say, mosque. So. I'm adding some additional spaces here. Let's bring this up. All right. So the next lesson here will be, I want to do the sphere again. It, it remembers the last settings that we applied when we, while we were modifying the sphere. So it will now draw something like this here for me if I want to draw it. Yeah. Uh, Ah, one important lesson that I forgot to mention, always save your file, because you might be working for a few hours and then you'll, you will forget everything if you, if you lose it. So I'll just have it class work. Uh, number one. Yes. Okay, I'll be copying this. So let me actually uh, change this color to white as well. Okay. Now, uh, I want to have uh, a half a dome here. You can always go here, if, if, I, if you saw, I draw a sphere here, it works like this, it remembers the last uh, previous uh, settings. Or you can uh, have this auto grid on, uh, and when, while you have your auto grid on, wherever you draw, let me, let, me, let me show you with a cone for example, I can draw a cone here, yes? So, doesn't matter where you draw, you can have a cone on a cone on a cone. Yes, so, I mean, it's basically wherever you, you first click, that would be where it will draw the geometry. Now, so I want to have a half a sphere here. I draw it. I mean, in a simple practice like this, I can just push it in, you know, and just put it in place. Uh, but it's not the, like a very good way of doing stuff anyway. I, I want to eyeball it this time, but uh, at least I, I don't want to have access geometries inside other geometries. It doesn't look good. Uh, so I have the same, uh, let's say 0 0.6 of a dome, 0 0.4 of a dome actually. And you have this slicer. So if you put the slicer on and you press 180, it'll, cut half, it'll chop half of it down. Yeah. Now, I want to practice with uh, rotation. So, what was rotation? E. W for move, E for rotation. Now I move it. 
if I want to type down the exact 90 degree, I'll come down here below the timeline and just press 90. Then I can go to the top and place it in the middle somewhat. We will get to the snaps later on, how we can exactly precisely put it. But now, for now, it's okay. Then I scale it because it still uh, doesn't look as, uh, as good as I want it to be. Uh, or maybe this doesn't look actually good, so maybe it make this smaller a little bit. Yes, okay, looks good. Now, ah, the ring, you can have the ring as well. Uh, but, okay, let's have the ring as well. So, let's have the ring. I wanted to show you how to copy, but that's the next one. So, cylinder. Uh, let's go to modify. Cylinder also have a slicer. You can have it 180 degree. Or let's say 0 and the other 180 degree. Yeah. Or you can rotate it easily. Let's go here. Let's scale it down. Let's go to the side. Let's move this a little bit up. Okay. Looks okay. This is a little bit too big. Uh, maybe I, I go for a kind of more uh, squeeze tone. Okay. Now this is this looks good. Now I want to copy. Uh, and paste this uh, two more times. We will have an entrance and then we will have uh, the other dome. So I just select here. If you want to select one by one, you keep the control down in 3D Max. So if I select this, I keep the control to like select the others, or I just go to the top view and select everything. Now, uh, shift down is for the copy. So if you if, uh, while moving, rotating, or scaling, if you keep your shift button down, it will make a copy. Moving, rotating, or scaling, you keep the shift down, it will make a copy. And then you can rotate it. Uh, you can type down the dimension, of course, here. Uh, these are two different gizmos, so like you have to deal with this. Uh, Uh, 180 bam yes this is okay let's put it in yes now I want to show you the next command I have this instead of moving it rotating in and everything I want to mirror this over here so there is this command here from the, in the top. You can find it here, mirror. If you click here, it will mirror the object. And then you have to give it a kind of a, along which axis do you want to mirror it. Now I want it to be uh, axis toward the Y direction. I don't want to remove the original object, so I click on copy. It will make a copy. Now, okay. Now I just move it. And put it here. Let's go to 3D. Yes, now uh, I'll try to create uh, three minarets here. Uh, four minarets. Uh, I'll make one and then we copy it around. Uh, for the minaret, I'll start with uh, under create tab, geometries, standard primitive. I'll start with a cylinder. So for this practice I'm not working with dimensions I just want you to get the proportion right like almost so uh, I'll create the first uh, cylinder because we will be copying this let me change the color of this one to kind of light gray yes now I have the or let's even have it a little some color that you can see easily later we can change it okay now we have the basic cylinder. You can always scale it to find the proper uh, uh, like 
if you want it to be a little bit more uh, thinner or something like that. So when you get the basic proportion right, you keep the shift down and I'm copying it by scaling it down because I want to have a kind of a base. One, okay, press Z to zoom on the object. Now I enlarge it a little bit. For this uh, minaret, I don't want to have again like five uh, segments along the height. Uh, I'll, I'll decrease this to one and then I'll increase the segments a little bit to make it a little bit more smoother for the render. Then I press shift down and drag it up one more time. Uh, they have this uh, kind of uh, segments in the minaret. I'm just trying to create something similar. Uh, so I bring it up here. I go back. Then shift down again, maybe one, two, three, four, five. Let's see how many do we need. Okay, maybe enlarge this one a little bit more. Come here, let's remove the last one, press delete. Usually, one before the last is a little bit larger, it's some place that they can actually go on and like do something. So I enlarge the last one a little bit. All right, looks good. Now, what I want to do, I want to create a cone here on the top. As you remember, again, I go under uh, Create tab, Cone, and I check my auto grid on. You can always create it somewhere and then move it, but now I just want to move it here to create it here actually. Okay. All right, in reality, you never have a kind of perfect cone in uh, with working with construction material very rarely, so it has a little bit of. So I, I go to the top view, I centralize it, I make sure that it is on the right place. Uh, I go back, check if the proportion works. Usually, uh, these are a little bit pointier and taller. Okay, now it looks okay. So I have my first minaret. Uh, what you can do, uh, you can group it or you can move it as it is. Uh, maybe you want to add a little bit more detailing even like for example here if I keep the shift down. It's always nice to add more details as much as possible like you can have a kind of a more a shallower base under the minaret. Uh, it will show nice shadows when you render it uh, at the end. All right, so usually they have this kind of balls on top. Let me go see if we can make some of those. Mm -hmm. So I go to sphere. I make sure that these all are reset to default. Uh, create one, go to top. Let's see if it's actually in the right place. It's not. Press Z. Make sure that this is centralized. Since I'll try to render this uh, very I'll try to show you a very basic render. Uh, I'll make this, I make the color of this one a little bit yellow so it renders some hot gold. Now uh, shift down and up, let's say two, three. Okay. I'm not going to create the kind of a moon uh, type uh, shape for now. Toward the end, maybe for next lesson, we will do it actually. I'll I'll copy the same thing and I, I move it on top of the, the dome. So first from the side, I put something here, I go, toward the, I go to the top view and I centralize this. Eyeball it, we will get to how you can certainly like put it in the proper place later on. Okay, now let's say uh, this one I'm just going a little bit more overboard here. Let's say this one, people can actually come here. So I don't want to create a door now, but later we will do it. So let's say we want to have a kind of a, like a somewhat of a handrail here. So again, I go to the to the top view. I go to create tab. You have this other geometry called uh, what was it? A tube. Yeah, so for tube, I turn auto grid off. So imagine if this is the one. 
all right now we click three times you can always do it in perspective if you feel a little bit more confused so I bring this up press Z oh sorry uh, press Z because I'm working with so many 3d uh, programs is F in Maya I keep pressing F uh, all the time here so let's go to modify decrease this to uh, now let's increase this a little bit yes looks okay now we have our minaret I'll go to the top view I select it we will get to grouping later so I move this here once and then I select this keep control down select the other one shift down and move it to the other side okay all right so this is uh, this is basic uh, le for lesson one and they will have an entrance here so usually let's say uh, let's say if we have an entrance here uh, I'll just add another geometry to give it that kind of a look uh, we'll make another box here let's say it's a modern a little bit more modern mosque uh, increase it and now I want to show you the pro boolean of course although it's for the next lesson basically but uh, you can practice it here as well uh, this would be enough for this lesson uh, let me make it a little bit wider okay let's see we'll, we'll keep the pro boolean for next uh, for next lesson or what you can do uh, you can always go to the other to, to add more geometries here for example let's say uh, you have the uh, extended primitive in under extended primitive you have a C uh, C type form which you can always like use as a kind of a, let's say door type thing yeah so like if you make it like this and then you rotate it uh, bam, 90 degrees and then you scale it down for the purpose of today's like practice let's go to the top move it put it uh, approximately where you want it to be yes looks good uh, all right now I go again under basic geometries and I create a plane uh, create geometries standard primitive and I add a plane uh, under it because I want to make a kind of a very simple render let's put it toward the center let's make it a little bit more uh, uh, let's say white or gray gray looks fine okay now you want to render this uh, for this practice uh, if you press F8 it will render you a very F9 it will render you a very basic simple image of the, the mosque we will get to more advanced rendering techniques uh, F9 it looks a little bit dull if you want to make it a little bit more interesting add some shadows and some stuff to it you can always go under again same create tab toward the end you'll see something called systems under systems you can find the daylight system this has its own uh, lesson toward the end but you can always use the daylight system to create a kind of more uh, pleasant shadows uh, when you created the daylight system you will get to this you can you you can put this to manual and start moving this around uh, until you find the best shadows that you're looking for if you want to see the shadows you have to come up here uh, and change this uh, from the edge face to the sorry from the standard to the high quality the high quality will show you some of the shadows uh, then while this is selected I go to modify there is this option toward the end uh, for casting shadows this will create a kind of a skylight smoother shadows so if now I go again zoom in press F9 uh, it will take a little bit longer but you can have your uh, kind of a more pleasant render of the Form. so this this is this is it for for lesson one if you have managed to create something like this is uh, okay for lesson one you were supposed to submit it uh, uh, last session but this is just a repetition if you haven't or you're a new student please uh, try to submit this to the email 
that I will link below uh, under the YouTube video. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you in the next lesson. And you can save it from here by save button and give it a format JPEG. Uh, fine for now. Give it a name and save it.